Okay, so I'm, I want to do an example of a tree diagram to just show you how it can help when it comes to, um, you know, creating a sample space and doing probability. All right, so let's do an example where, you know, I'm first going to roll a single die with six sides. Um, and each side is, you know, numbered one through six. And then, I don't know, flip a coin. So I have these two events happening and they're independent. Rolling the single die is not going to affect what I get for flipping the coin. So I'm going to roll the die first, let's say. So what are my possible outcomes if I roll a single die and I am numbers from one to six? Six sided die. So I can get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six, right? Those are all the possible outcomes when um, I roll a single die. But then I want to also flip a coin. So let's assume, here's the first situation. If I flip a coin, I'm either going to get heads and tail, heads or tails, correct? But if I roll a single die, um, let's talk about all the possible outcomes. Let's say that I get a one. If I get a one, then I have two situations that can happen after that if I flip a coin. I can get heads or tails. So um, what I'll do is my complete outcome at, at the end. My first situation is I get a one and then a heads. My second situation is I get a one and then a tails. So two possible outcomes so far for this particular uh, situation. Now I could also roll the single die and get a two. And if that happens, again, I can um, have two possible outcomes that happen if I roll the two. Let's say that I roll the two and I get a heads when I flip the coin. I roll the two or I get a tails when I flip the coin. So two outcomes here, I get a two and a heads or I get a two and a tails. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Here's the next situation. What if I roll a three first? Then I could have two possible outcomes, either heads or tails. So I roll a three and then I get a heads or I roll a three and then I get a tails. These are all the possible outcomes that occur when I roll a single die that is six sided and then I flip a coin that is two sided. Or I get a four, right? And then I, or a five, and I'm just gonna, or a six and then a heads or a tails. So these are all the possible outcomes that I'm listing. And you know, this is a very, you know, basic kind of tree diagram, but this is the idea behind it. It helps you determine as I follow the tree, five heads, five tails, five, uh, six heads, six tails, you follow each of the branches to get all the possible outcomes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 total outcomes, which you could determine without actually doing this as well. You do 6 times 2. 12 total outcomes. Now, if I want to write the sample space, it would be, you know, a list of just all these outcomes. One head, one tail. Two head, two tail. Three, uh, sorry, three head, three tail. Four head, four tail. These are all the possible outcomes that can happen under these two conditions, right? Now, the other part of, um, you know, rolling a single die and flipping a coin and dealing with probability is the, um, you know, calculating the outcome for a specific probability, uh, for a specific event. So, <clears throat> Well, let's calculate that. So here's my situation where I'm starting, right? And the first thing that can happen is I flip the coin. So there's one, two, three, four, obviously my lines are not perfect, but five, six possible outcomes for you know my initial event. And the probability of each of these outcomes is one out of six. So one six chance of me flipping a coin, uh, flipping a, rolling a single die and getting a one. One out of six chance of me rolling a single die and getting a two. One out of six chance of me getting a three. One out of six chance and getting a four. One out of six, one out of six, right? So this is the probability of each of these uh, situations, each of these outcomes for my first event. Now I go here. Well, what's the probability of me getting a heads or a tails? Well, <clears throat> it's you know one half chance of me getting a heads and one half chance of me getting a tails because there's two outcomes. So if I follow in green, let's do it in green. If I follow this branch, this branch represents uh, rolling a single die and getting a one and then flipping a coin and getting a heads, a one and then a heads. So if I follow this and I follow the probabilities, I have a one sixth times a one half. 
So I'm multiplying, you know, the values on each of the branches. And when I multiply those, 1 12th. 1 12th chance of this particular situation happening. Now I made a very nice easy kind of tree diagram because I could determine this probability of this happening. You know, just based on knowing all the sample spaces, this is 1 out of the 12 total possible outcomes. But this is also how a tree diagram works. Let's assume you want to find the probability of rolling a single die and flipping a coin and getting a three and then um, let's say a tail. So I have my tree diagram, right? I'm going to follow the branch where I get a three first, which is one sixth chance times, then getting a tail. I didn't write the one half here, but it's the same thing on, on all of these one half chance of each of these happening, one sixth, and then this branch one half, one six times one half, so one twelfth chance of me doing this, getting a three, and then a tails. Now this is, again, right, it's not extremely difficult because of the fact that um, since I have the total sample space, I know that there's one chance out of the 12 total, right, of this particular event. But I want to show you how the um, tree diagram works as well. So let me do another real quick example. Let's say that I... Um, Let's flip a coin. I'm just going to flip it twice, just for space. I'm flipping the coin twice. So here's my beginning. All right, well, on my first flip, what are my possible outcomes? I can get either a heads or I can get a tails. There's one half chance of this happening and one half chance of that happening. So as I go along this branch, right, the probability of me getting a head, if I'm flipping a coin once, is one half the probability of me getting a tail is one half. Now I'm gonna flip it again. So here's my first situation. I'm gonna, let's say, flip it the first time and get a heads, flip it the second time and get either a heads or a tails. These are the two outcomes that can happen if I flip a coin, get a heads, and then I flip it again, I can either get a head or a tail. One half chance of that happening, one half chance of that happening. What happens if I flip the coin the first time and get a tails? Well, when I flip it the second time, I can either get a heads or a tails, and there's one half chance of that happening, and one half chance of that happening. Now, this is my first event, right? And this, these are my second events. Let's follow this branch here. If I go here and I say, well, H and then H. So my, one of my possible outcomes is getting a heads and then a heads. What is that probability? What is the probability of this particular situation? Well, if I have my tree diagram, I run across these branches. I go, well, here's the first branch. One half chance times. Follow the branch until I get to the end outcome. I want to go from head to head again. Another one half chance. One half times one half is one fourth. One fourth or 0.25 or 25% chance of me randomly flipping a coin twice and getting a heads and then a heads. Um, what about a probability of a heads and then a tails? Again, I'm going to follow this and go, here's heads, and then here's tails. So, right, I'm going to follow one half and then one half. So the product of one half and one half, one fourth, 0.25, 25%. The idea here is to show you how a tree diagram helps organize if you have multiple events happening. You don't need it technically, but it does help visualize a situation. You could write all the possible outcomes, head, head head tails, tails heads, right? Tails, tails. And you can also determine the probabilities of each of those outcomes. So you follow the branches and you multiply those corresponding values to get that total probability. And you can see my sample space, if I wanna write out my total sample space, is the first situation is getting a heads and then a heads. My second situation is a heads and then a tails. My third and my fourth. So I have four total outcomes. So the probability of one of them would be one out of four. I could determine that by knowing my sample space and knowing all the outcomes, or I could look at my tree diagram and do it that way also. So the idea of a tree diagram is to help organize and visualize the situation so that you can identify all the possible outcomes, right? Um, and then find corresponding probabilities.